Good morning. My, my name is Andrew McIntyre. I'm Dean of the College of Asia and Pacific here. Uh, let me begin by uh, acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the, Ngun the Ngunnawal people, uh, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. Um, it's a great pleasure to uh, uh, have people here joining us for this first uh, Mongolia update. Um, let me uh, uh, welcome, because uh, we've got people not just from the university community here with us today, but people from uh, across the lake, uh, from other cities, uh, and let me especially welcome uh, people who've come here, uh, of course, from Mongolia today. Um, this is quite, uh, uh, quite a special initiative for the university. Uh, as many of you will know, this is the, this is the largest um, collection of, of scholars dedicated to work uh, on the Asia-Pacific uh, region uh, in any major uh, research university in the English-speaking world. And people know us for our big concentrations on work on Indonesia, on Papua New Guinea in the Pacific, on China, Japan, India. People don't know us yet as much for our work on Mongolia. And what we're signalling here today is that we're making a stand on Mongolia. That the university uh, uh, is getting behind uh, this and supporting, on an ongoing basis, scholarly inquiry uh, uh, into um, all sorts of issues relating to uh, uh, Mongolia's past, pre present and future. Uh, a first step in this direction uh, was the establishment of our Mongolia Institute um, just recently. Um, a next step in this direction is this inaugural uh, Mongolia update. Um, uh, and there are more things coming. Uh, for example, uh, we are uh, now um, uh, committing to offer Mongolian language. Um, uh, as anyone who knows anything about uh, the business of universities, uh, and in particular the business of, uh, uh, of language instruction, uh, it's, it's really expensive. Um, uh, we're doing this, we can make this possible um, through some um, creative work uh, of colleagues of mine uh, in collaboration uh, with our counterparts at Indiana University in the United States that has um, significant expertise uh, in Mongolia and Mongolian, and we're doing some collaboration with them to make this possible. Uh, there are, there's all sorts of things one could say about uh, the exciting program that's uh, ahead of you today, but I won't burn up time on that. Uh, it's a, it's a, a strong uh, mix of speakers and a great mix of topics. Um, uh, but what I should do uh, is pay tribute to a number of people who've played a key role in uh, uh, making this possible. Uh, in particular, I'd like to uh, acknowledge His Excellency Mr. Abdan Bold, uh, uh, the Ambassador uh, for Mongolia, who will be speaking to you in just a moment. Um, uh, uh, ambassadors, High Commissioners uh, are often important for uh, events like this, but I'd like to pay particular tribute uh, to Mr. Bold. Uh, both for um, uh, uh, material support uh, that the Embassy has, has given to this update and material support for our introduction uh, of an intensive uh, Mongolian language program in our summer school program, but more broadly for, I guess, his leadership, uh, uh, energy and, uh, uh, and activism uh, around the Canberra community and engaging with the universities and others uh, in bringing uh, Mongolia uh, just more and more into uh, the collective consciousness of this city and this country uh, and the wider discussions of regional affairs. So particular tribute to uh, uh, Ambassador Bold. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like to acknowledge um, others who have uh, uh, contributed uh, resources, uh, financial resources, to make uh, today's uh, uh, update possible. Um, our School of Culture, History and Language, our Crawford School of Public Policy, two of the schools that make up this, this big college of Asia and the Pacific, um, uh, and the college itself have all put in uh, resources to make this possible. So uh, thank you to all of them. 
But uh, if I was to single any one person out uh, uh, for special tribute, uh, it would be my colleague, Professor Lee Narongoa. Uh, if, it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't for Nara, this just wouldn't be happening. There's lots of people like me that say, wouldn't it be good to have an initiative on Mongolia or, or this, that or the other thing? It takes someone like Nara to really pick up an idea and run with it and put in their personal time and energy, inject their own individual um, intellectual vision for it, uh, and to build the networks and the alliances and the collaborations that are needed to bring people together. So I particularly uh, want to thank uh, Professor Lee, pay tribute to her, and um, uh, on your behalf, um, wish her great success, uh, uh, not just in making today go well, but in keeping this whole venture pushing forward. I mean, deans can be useful in the background, clearing a bit of obstacles and that sort of thing, but you need individual uh, academic leadership for something like this to work. And uh, Nara, we're grateful to you for it. Um, let me uh, stop there, otherwise I just go on and on with propaganda. Um, uh, and let me, uh, let, let me invite uh, Ambassador Abdan Bold to uh, also make some opening remarks. Ambassador. Thank you, Andrew. <coughs> uh, thank you, Andrew, for your nice words. Uh, I'm the Bold. My name is the Bold, the new ambassador of Mongolia to Australia. Bold uh, means not this one, but uh, bold means strong and steel. Uh, so, uh, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> uh, let me express my deep appreciation uh, to the Australian National University, uh, particularly to the School of Asia and Pacific, uh, uh, Dr. Andrew uh, McClintine, uh, as well as to the school of the uh, the history, language, and the culture, uh, to the professor, uh, Dr. Professor Preacher, Vilal, and other prominent people from the Australian National University who make possible today's our first event, the conference uh, Mongolia uh, update. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to promote and advocate. Uh, Mongolia uh, throughout uh, Australia. The Mongolia Institute, as Andrew mentioned, uh, was impossible without uh, Professor Narangwa. So the, my deep salute uh, to the Professor Narangwa on the behalf of our uh, delegation who come to this uh, conference. And thank you so much for your contribution. Yes, and the, the bilateral relations between Mongolia and Australia is growing uh, faster in the last couple of years. Uh, and uh, last year, the Mongolian Prime Minister visited uh, Australia for the first time, and we made uh, for the first time the, the bilateral joint statement, which said uh, Mongolia and Australia, we had uh, common the strategic uh, interests uh, in the Asia-Pacific region, the namely the stability and the sustainability. So it's very important points. Uh, so far, the two, 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 two countries uh, emphasized uh, on the development of the bilateral relations uh, in the three basic areas. Uh, first is education, then the agriculture, then the mining. Now we're going to add uh, to this uh, three the basic uh, cooperation, the fourth one is uh, peacekeeping uh, uh, field, peacekeeping operation. Yes, and the uh, uh, second half of the, the 2012 was very rich in the bilateral relations too. Uh, in the end of the August, uh, the large number of the Australian parliamentarians uh, visited uh, Mongolia, led by the independent member of the parliament, uh, uh, Windsor, or the five, four or five uh, members of Australian uh, Parliament visited us. 
Then the Honorable Bob Carr, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Australia, visited uh, Mongolia. And in the mid of the September, also, we celebrated the 40 years uh, anniversary of the establishment of the official relations between the Mongolia and Australia. And the uh, two prime ministers exchanged very good, strong the greetings, uh, which indicate in the uh, both sides uh, are very energetic to put forward our bilateral relations. And uh, just in the last week, uh, we finished the uh, first ever visit of the Mongolian chief, uh, Mongolian chief of the Mongolian Armed Forces uh, to Australia. Also, we agreed, uh, as I mentioned, to, to, to start a cooperation in the peacekeeping field uh, between our two countries. And uh, what is in agenda of, uh, as Ambassador Mongolia to Australia is yes, we are thinking a lot of things. Uh, for instance, uh, we are thinking uh, to talk, uh, to start, uh, if possible, the, some the charter flight uh, by the Qantas uh, from Australia uh, to Mongolia and back to Australia. We are already talking about this one. Second, also, we are uh, looking for to the to, to opportunity to have the bilateral uh, Mongolian Australian, Australian Mongolian the Business Council uh, to be established. Also, the, we are looking for the next year the, to have the first ever the biggest uh, uh, exhibition in overseas uh, by Mongolian the traditional museum called uh, museum called the Zan Bazar be opened in the Sydney in the November of the next year. It will be last for. Uh, three months, uh, which uh, collection which will bring from Mongolia will consist of the very unique uh, items. Uh, so we hope we, uh, we will uh, able to run this exhibition in the next year. Also, the uh, companies based in the Western Australia state uh, looking for to uh, organize uh, biggest uh, Mongolian day in the next year in the Perth and the Western Australia because of this mining the movement in the above countries. So there are a lot of things in the agenda, but uh, we need uh, um, the big efforts uh, to do. Then uh, I, I would like also to point out uh, at least uh, four, 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 four points uh, which our Mongol Update Conference uh, concites. Uh, uh, first is uh, Australian interest in Mongolia is growing very much. So far, the, according to Mongolian statistics, uh, at least uh, 95 Australian companies registered in Mongolia as the investor. So far, they made uh, around 85 million US dollars uh, investment uh, in Mongolian economy. I'm not uh, counting the real tinta investment, which is around uh, 2 billion US dollars investment. Also, the the those Mongolian, uh, those Australian who are interested in Mongolia, uh, looking for some business opportunity, looking for some the business partner, uh, are growing very much. And the last year, 4,600 Australians visited uh, Mongolia, and according to the statistics, in this year, in the first 10 months of this year, over the 5,000 Australians already visited. Uh, uh, Mongolia so far. So the, we have very great potential which is not yet touched uh, in the bilateral relations. So the question is, uh, we are ready to, 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 to embrace uh, this Australian the growing interest uh, in uh, Mongolia. So the, probably this question will be answered by our colleagues who just arrived yesterday from the Mongolia. Uh, secondly, the changes uh, are taking place in the Mongolia's external environment. Now we have the new leadership in the Russia, and now we are going to have the new leadership in the China, and uh, we expect uh, somehow the new approach from our two neighbors uh, to Mongolian new government and to Mongolian the question. So how we should keep on the, in these new circumstances our the Fed neighbor policy and the uh, Fed. The next point is uh, just Australian government. Uh, two weeks ago, the Australian Prime Minister uh, launched the 
the new white paper called the Australian the Asian Century. Uh, it's just the uh, Asian community w received so well uh, this white paper. Uh, many of the Asian leadership uh, countries uh, uh, very, very excited about this uh, the new launch of the white paper because the Asia is not uh, only ready to embrace Australia, but Asia is already with Australia for many times. Now so Australia is good news is considering itself as the part of the Asia Pacific region, finally, we hope. And then, next point is uh, uh, just June of this year, we had a new election in the Mongolia, so the result of the formation of the new government. And next year also we will have the presidential election. Very soon also we will have the local election in Mongolia. So a lot of elections and a lot of questions and a lot of expectations. Then many people approached me saying uncertainty in Mongolia. And what happened to the Sarah Armstrong, Australian citizen? Uh, frankly say, now I I had headache, but just I am scared now to turn the pages of newspaper in the morning in the last two weeks, uh, frankly say. So the many, many questions uh, will be answered, I hope, also by our colleagues. Just last week, uh, the Mr. Smith, uh, the CEO of the ANZ Bank, uh, told me in Melbourne when we met, the ANZ Bank is ready to open its office in Mongolia. But when, tell me, Ambassador, when, when I'm going to office, when your uncertainty is gone? Uh, his question like this. So many, many business uh, community asked me the, such questions. But what mean uncertainty? Uh, there is some gap between the understanding regarding the uncertainty in Australia and Mongolia. So probably the, our colleagues also would answer these questions to you. And finally, the, I cannot miss to point out the number of points. First, uh, the Australian <coughs> National University is the, one of the places in the world of the Mongolian studies. And uh, we have to salute uh, to the Dr. Igor de Rakowitz, who is the one of the founder members of the International Mongolian Studies in the world who used to work at the Australian National University, who is still there. Uh, second is uh, uh, Mongolia Institute was launched. Uh, it's very good news for us. Uh, so it's the uh, first year at the conference, Mongolia Update. It's not last one. It's why the um, embassy will uh, do its best uh, just to cooperate with the Mongolia Institute. So taking this opportunity also let me make a statement that the embassy will provide uh, the Mongolia Institute uh, the next year with uh, the first uh, small uh, contribution, 10,000 Australian dollars uh, to, 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 to promote its activity uh, in the next year. Yes, so I'm happy to uh, make an announcement to the Professor Narangwa about this one. And finally, the, thank you so much for your attendance at this conference, and uh, I hope uh, you will get uh, a good time today. And uh, after the uh, conference, I invite all of you to join uh, to the small reception and the cocktail drinking, if you survive the whole conference. <laughs> thank you.